Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, everybody. I will greet you all in the name of Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, our Alahayam, our Dona Yache Messiah, and our Mother Ruaka Kwadusi. We are thankful for this opportunity to spend with you all and looking forward to this feast of the Day of Atonement that's coming up. And uh, we are Hebrew readers. I am your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zakwa. And Ahaya has given us the grace to speak with you here about the Day of Atonement so you can understand it and be prepared for it before it comes in. All right. First, we want to look at what is a fast according to the scriptures. Uh, can you read the definition of the word fast, please, in 866-84? Yes, it's to abstain from food. Fast. So it's abstaining from food. That was the brownness briggs. And can you read the uh, strongs as well, please? A primitive root to cover over the mouth. So that means you literally you don't put anything in the mouth. To let you know it's not eating food or drinking drink. All right. Can we look at Matthew 4, verse 1 to 4, to see that fasting indeed was not eating food and drinking drink? Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then when Yahche led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Can you read the definition of the word fasted? It's uh, G3522, please. To abstain as a religious exercise from food and drink. To have, there it is. We went here because it's in Greek, and Greek is closer to the English language. So you can understand that fasting meant to abstain from food and drink. Okay. E either entirely, if the fast lasted but a single day. Mm -hmm. Or from customary and choice nourishment, if it continued several days. Some people will fast more than that time, like Yahche fasted 40 days. And then there is the Day of Atonement, which requires a fasting for one day. Uh, can you read the Strong's definition as well, please? That was the Thayer's definition. I'll read the Strong's definition. To abstain from food religiously, fast. All right, and confirm that he literally didn't eat anything because what did the devil tempt him with after in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 and 4? Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Elohim. And there we see how we have food to eat on the day of atonement because it is a feast day and our food is the bread that right. coming from on high the word of Allah Hayyam, by which man shall live that's our meat on that day and the bread that sustains us we've seen in the new testament fast was not eating food and drinking drink and uh, let's look at esther chapter 4 verse 15 and 16 to see in the old testament fast was not eating food and drinking drink either esther chapter 4 verse 15 then Esther bade them return. Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. And we already went over the word for fast in the beginning to notice to abstain. And, I, and what did, can you read that last part again? And fast ye for me, and, and neither eat nor drink three days. So we see it's not eating or drinking. Okay, continue. Night or day, I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Right, so we know what fasting is scripturally. Now, let's look at the New Testament as well again to see that Paul also fasted. Um, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and verse 27, please. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death often. Verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Now, 
can you read that definition for the word fast and what Paul said is uh, G3521, please. A fasting, fast, a voluntary as a religious exercise or private, private fasting. The public fast as prescribed by the Mosianic law and kept yearly on the great day of atonement. So this definition shows that they were still keeping the fast of the day of atonement as well for those who wonder if you actually have to fast on the day of atonement. So you gotta understand you are required to fast. The tenth day of the seventh month, the fast accordingly occurred in the autumn when navigation was usually dangerous on accounts of storms. Okay, and in chapter 27 of Acts of the Apostles, there was a storm at that time too. When, so you can know that Paul actually kept the fast in the time frame when we go to that verse. Can you read the uh, Strong's definition, please? That was the Thayer's definition. Can you read the Strong's, please? Abstinence. From lack of food or voluntary and religious. Right. Specifically, the fast of the Day of Atonement. Specifically, the fast of the Day of Atonement. So we can confirm that it was still kept even in the New Testament after Christ had made the atonement. Because, as Paul said in Romans chapter 3, verse 31, do we then make void the law through faith? Allah forbid. Yea, we establish the law. We keep, now we keep all the commandments, the feast, all that Ahaya requires by faith in Yahweh. Okay. Right. Now, let's look to see that Paul literally kept the Day of Atonement as well in the New Testament. Uh, in Acts 27 and 9, please. Now, when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous. As I said, in that season of the year, the waters are rough, okay? Because the fast was now already passed. Because the fast was now already passed. And we just read the definition in G, uh, what was that, 30... 521 that the fast is referring specifically the fast of the day of atonement so we know we do have to keep this feast and it was still kept even in the new testament continue please paul admonished them and can you read first corinthians 5 and 8 to see that the not only were the apostles keeping feast days also the congregations were keeping feast days as paul was admonishing the church even to keep the feast of passover in righteousness 1 Corinthians 5 and 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, we're going to read also from the Apocrypha in 2 Ezra to see that in the understanding of the Old Testament, fasting did not uh, include eating food. Let's look at 2 Ezra to see that he fasted for three weeks, and then the fourth week he ate food and they didn't count as fasting anymore. So we can understand that fasting is not eating food and drink on the Day of Atonement. And we've seen already from the definition of the Greek and looking at the New Testament that they actually fasted on the Day of Atonement. So we can know we have to actually fast. Uh, second Ezra chapter 5 verse 13 and then chapter 6 verse 31 and 35 please. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 5 verse 13. To show thee such tokens I have leave, and if thou wilt pray again, and weep as now, and fast even day, excuse me, and fast even days, thou shalt hear great, yet greater things. Okay. Second Andrew, Second Andrew chapter six verse thirty one. If thou wilt pray yet more, and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day that I have heard. Okay. Then I have heard. So now that's two weeks of fasting. Continue verse 35. And it came to pass after this that I wept again and fasted seven days in like manner that I might fulfill the three weeks which he told me. And now let's see Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 23 to 25. But we've seen he actually fasted for those three weeks. And let's see what happens in the fourth week. Nevertheless, if thou would cease yet seven more days... But thou shalt not fast in them, but go into a field of flowers where no house is builded, and eat only the flowers of the field. Taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only. So he wasn't fasting anymore because he was starting to eat flowers. We can see that one we're eating that we're not fasting. Okay. So the Day of Atonement is this seventh month. Let's 
look at Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26 and 27, please. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26. And the highest spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto Ahiah. All right. We see that we have to afflict our souls. Can you read the definition of afflict, please? Uh, eight sixty thirty-one. If you can read the uh, strong, yeah, please. Okay. A primitive root, possibly rather identical with eight sixty thirty, through the idea of looking down or brow beating. So it's describing the humbling experience, looking down on oneself, right, mourning for one's transgressions. Right, continue, please. To depress literally or figuratively, transitively or intransitively, in various applications, <laughs> obey self. Oh, so we bring ourselves down, okay. Affliction or afflict self, answer chasten this self. This is a chastening process. Deal hardly with. Right, because this is what fasting does. We're dealing hard with our soul, okay. Defile, exercise, force, gentleness. Humble. Humble. Or humble self. Right. Hurt. Because affliction, that fasting actually has an effect on the body. Ravish. So we have some definitions to understand. And we afflict through fasting because, can you read the definition of soul, please? Uh, that's H 5315. And the word for afflict was H6031. We're looking at the word uh, for soul here now, please. Can you read the Browners Brigham definition? Soul. Self. Life, creature, person, appetite. We see how by fasting we afflict our appetite as well. So we can know that we actually have to abstain from food, even as we've seen the word in the Greek even meant the fast, the day of atonement. And Paul and people in the New Testament were actually keeping the fast and the other feast days. Let's continue reading Leviticus 23. Verse 28 to 32, please. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 28. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before Hayah your Elohim. And we need to see, so also in this day we do no work. H4399, please. Occupation, work, business. Occupation, business, property, work, something done or made worksmanship service use public business political religious so our work on that day is doing the will of the father we are not to do buying selling we are to spend that day focusing on our repentance and confessing our sins and bringing ourselves to a low place so that i may be gracious and may atone for our sins through yache that we may have a clear conscience and a cleansed heart to go forward and sin no more. All right. Can you continue reading Leviticus 23 and 29, please? Sure. But whatsoever soul it be that shall not be, afflict, not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. And this is you shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and, and for all your dwellings. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. And it's forever. So throughout all our dwellings. So it doesn't matter where we are. The feast has to still be kept. All right. All right. Continue, please. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. So it's just like a Sabbath day, except we do not eat and drink on that day. You can reference Jubilees chapter 50 to understand the laws of the Sabbath day. And uh, also you can visit the lesson on the Sabbath day to understand how to keep it. And the website. Yeah. Under um, Holy Days and Calendar. Thank you. And you can also do that for the Day of Atonement as well. All right. Uh, continue, please. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. And now we understand how to afflict our souls, even as they did in the days of Paul, by fasting, not eating and drinking, and also humbling ourselves, repenting for our sins. This is a, is a physical affliction of the soul, 
and a spiritual affliction by really literally beating ourselves up about all the wrong we've done and looking down upon ourselves and really you know confessing and seeing ourselves for what we have been continue in the ninth day of the month at even. Now notice it says in the ninth day of the month at even. Right. So it's not on the ninth day. It's within the ninth day. That means that even is referring to the end of the ninth day. Because days go from even to even. And when at ninth day at even, when that sun goes down and there's no sunlight on the face of the sky, that's when the tenth day comes in. Right. And that's why it says in the ninth day at even. So you can know it, it start. It has to be the whole tenth day, not just a part of the tenth day. All right? Continue, please. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Notice it says from even unto even. So if you go from the ninth day at even, that's going into the end of the day. The sun goes down. There's no light on the sky. The tenth day has come in. Then he says, from even unto even. So at least, you know, from that time when the 10th day came in, you fast all the way until the next even when the sun goes down and there's no light on the sky. And that will ensure that you keep the whole 10th day, which is the Day of Atonement, according to Leviticus 23 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. This feast was instituted in the days of Jacob when he was told Joseph was gone. Jubilees 32, verse 12 to 14 and verse 17 to 19, please. My thoughts at 13. Is that okay? Yeah, 13 is right. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Jubilees, you going to read it? Yeah. yeah. Jubilees chapter 34, verse 13. And he mourned all that night, for they had brought it to him in the evening. And he became feverish with mourning for his death. Now that's something you see. When he mourned, he mourned all that night. They brought the news to him in the evening. And he mourned that night. So it lets you know the morning didn't start till the sun was gone. Right. So we can confirm that the Day of Atonement is when the sun is actually down and there's no light of the sun on the face of the sky. Right? And he said, An evil beast has devoured Joseph. And all the members of his house mourned with him that day. Notice it started that night and all the members of his house mourned with him that day. So they mourned the whole day from the night unto the next even. Just as the feast says from even unto even. And they were grieving and mourning with him all that, night, all that day. And his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted for his son. And he mourned for Joseph one year and did not cease. For he said, let me go. Let me go down to the gray morning for my son. For this reason, for this reason, it is ordained for the children of Israel that they should afflict themselves on the tenth of the seventh month, on the day that the news which made him weep for Joseph came to Jacob his father, that they should make atonement for themselves thereon with a young goat on the tenth of the seventh month, once a year for their sins. For they had grieved the affection of their father regarding Joseph, his son. Mm -hmm. And this day had been ordained that they should grieve thereon for their sins. Right. And for all their transgressions and for all their errors, so that they might cleanse themselves on that day once a year. All right. And all are held accountable on that day. You can read Jubilees chapter 5, verse 13 to 19, please. Jubilees chapter 5, verse 13. And the judgment of all is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets in righteousness, even the judgment of all who depart from the path which is ordained for them to walk in. And if they walk not therein, judgment is written down for every creature and for every kind. And there is nothing in heaven or on earth or in, or in, or in light or in darkness or in shoel or in the depth or in the place of darkness which is not judged and and all their judgments ordained and written and engraved in regard to all he would judge the great according to his greatness and the small according to his smallness and each according to his way and he is not one who will regard the person of any nor is he one who will receive gifts if he says that he will execute judgment on each if one gave everything that is on the earth 
he will not regard the gift or the person of any, nor accept anything at his hands, for he is a righteous judge. And of the children of Israel, it have been written and ordained. If they turn to him in righteousness, he will forgive all their transgressions and pardon all their sins. It is written and ordained that he will show mercy to all who turn from their guilt once each year. And that's the day, the day of atonement. So we have guidance. We have guidance. Hmm. Well, did you finish? No, no, I got it. Verse 19. And as for all those who corrupt their ways and their thoughts before the flood, no man's person was accepted save that of Noah alone. For his person was accepted in behalf of his sons, whom Elohim saved from the waters of the flood on his account. For his heart was righteous in all his ways, according as it was commanded regarding him. And he had not departed from aught that was ordained for him. So we see that there were people that worked righteousness of all time that we may be encouraged to know that we may work our righteousness as well. Um, with that exhortation, we now understand that the Day of Atonement requires fasting and it's still a Sabbath day, so the laws of the Sabbath apply except eating and drinking. And we have already spoken on visiting the website to get understanding of the day and ah, yeah, prosperous, we we'll leave the link for that in the description of the video as well. Come Day of Atonement, we afflict ourselves within, mourn for our sins, and prepare our heart for this battle that's coming. And with that, we love you all, and we pray Ahaya strengthen you, and Yache be in you, guide you, lift you up, to do His will, and do the will of His Father. Awa Alahayam Ahaya Asri Ahaya. Ahaya strengthen you all. May you keep us and may we truly um, really relish in this day and really look within ourselves to, to really purge out the iniquity and the things that we've been doing wrong this year and the battles that we've been constantly struggling with, whether it be pride or or uh, lust or or um, whatever whatever the struggle may be, uh, lying, let's definitely um change our mindset to overcome it and to, to really focus and zone in so that this doesn't become our downfall in the future. So um, definitely take the time and, and really prone on these things so that we may be delivered from them. So. All right. That should be with us. All right. Tell them everybody. <laughs>